Welcome to KMNH, Kids Making the News Happen. Welcome to this week's KMNH, I'm Toby. Now over to Malcolm who will tell us about a major loss to the world of rock and roll. On October 6, 2020, Eddie Van Halen, songwriter and guitarist of the rock band Van Halen, passed away from complications with cancer at the age of 65. Formed in 1972, the band Van Halen would go on to sell more than 56 million albums in the U.S. alone. Ten of the band's albums went multi-platinum, with 11 in the top 20 and four times as number one on the Billboard's top 200. Eddie Van Halen was a music legend and he will be greatly missed by millions of fans worldwide. Remember a few weeks ago, we reported on the alley cleanup organized by Northside residents. It turns out that the event went so well that the volunteers returned last week for round two of Northside versus the alleys. Back in September, we had 45 people show up, which I was amazed. And when people signed in, we asked them a question. If we did another alley cleanup, would you be interested in coming back? And almost everybody said yes. So we figured we get some more work done today because we did not finish. There is so much work in the alleys. The volunteer efforts were concentrated along two different alleys. Working on two alleys, Carry and Armor, which are really long alleys. They go all the way Chase to Pullen, which is really long because some alleys are really short. We have another crew over on Balter. It looks to me like the volunteers are winning this battle of weeds, debris, dirt, and more. We spoke to one volunteer who participated in round two of the cleanup, winning the fight one shovel full at a time. I like to go for walks around the neighborhood in the morning and whatever, and uh, sometimes I like walking down the alleys, but they're so just, there's debris and, and everything everywhere, and hopefully this can put those alleys back into good service. Thanks to all the volunteers helping keep north side alleyways in tip top shape. Last week, a farmer in western Massachusetts made a giant Biden-Harris sign out of hay bales to show support for the presidential ticket. And just one day later, it had burned to the ground. Kate Kearney Pike, a farm manager who helped build the sign, noticed a brown spot on one of the bales, but just assumed a visitor had spilled coffee on it. Not long after, firefighters arrived on the scene and spent close to an hour trying to extinguish the blaze. The cause of the fire remained a mystery until police announced that they had arrested a 49-year-old, Lonnie Dupree, who was charged with setting the sign on fire. In the ashes of the previous sign lays an American flag in a one word, vote. This has been your Enough is Enough segment from KMNH. That's when I was like, okay, a scooter it is. And I bought one from Dave Reeby, the founder of Metro Scooter, back in 2005. And then I came on to work with him full time in 2006. And I took over ownership in 2018. There's never been a time that I haven't absolutely enjoyed this. I feel like they are the best urban transportation option for a lot of reasons, but the fun and efficiency are my favorites. Metro Scooter has long been the source for gas-powered scooters that might get great mileage, but they have recently branched out to offer rides that are even more eco-friendly. I want to provide as many solutions for mobility as I can. In fact, we're doing analog bicycles as well, so not just electric, but also human-powered uh, bicycles, um, partially because of Xavier students' uh, campus nearby, but also the Watson Way. Uh, 
Mosa Youth Trail, which is right outside our front door. Metro Scooters offers both lots of brands and scooter accessories, and I asked Seth about some of his favorites. There's essentially three brands, three distributors, I should say. Um, Vespa, which is Piaggio, uh, Kimco, and Genuine. Genuine also imports the NIU brand of electric scooters, pronounced new, um, as well as the G400 motorcycle and the Royal Alloy, which is a more classic Lambretta style uh, scooter, in addition to the PGO scooters uh, like the Buddy and the Hooligan. My favorite bike, the Sprint Vespa 150, is just such a fantastic combination and matching of the power and weight and the suspension and the brakes and just the, the complete package that it became, that it, that it's created um, by the Vespa company in Italy. Whether it's just the paint job and the looks, the color schemes and the and the combinations that they use between the upholstery of the seat and the finish of the bike um, to the way that the brakes and suspension feel into a turn or, or coming out of a turn on the acceleration, it's there's nothing quite like it. We also met an employee who wears a lot of hats at Metro Scooters from social media to service, which he takes particular pride in. My role here is uh, I am a, uh, a service technician as well as a salesman. We do social media, um, kind of a semi-service manager. Uh, I kind of run the back shop, back the shop. Um, we order parts, uh, we fix and repair scooters, uh, as well as just service them to get them back on the road uh, for the customer to get around. Uh, so this bike came in with just uh, what he thought was an engine issue, but it was a flat tire. Uh, it wasn't reading the aspect ratio on the, the tire properly. Um, so we fixed that. We've already replaced the tire on that. And now we're moving on to, uh, to kind of repair. Uh, it got dropped on its side, so it's got some scuffs and scratches. Um, so we'll do um, we'll kind of prep this for uh, paint and body work, which we don't do in-house. We send that to a shop up the street. Um, but uh, we'll replace the plastic panels, but we'll also take out the lights and any uh, uh, panels that are in the way of the paint. Uh, and so we'll, uh, you know, he'll get a new glove box, he'll get a new trim piece, he'll get a new trim piece here, and uh, then he'll be back on the road and he'll be looking pretty. Uh, see, my favorite bike in the shop would be the probably the Kenko Spade. Uh, it's a little motorcycle. Um, you got kind of sitting over there. It's a five-speed motorcycle, so you shift gears and you really, really get run it out and rev it out. They're just really, really fun. It's the most fun I've had on two wheels. John also told us about how it's the mission of Metro Scooters to bring the fun of riding to families and young people. I really, really love scooters and getting around on scooters. I think it's the best way to get around town and, um, and sometimes the best way to get across the country if you can. I think everybody should be doing it and at least should try to ride a scooter just to see how easy and, and, and approachable they are. So if you're interested in scootering for the first time, the first thing you're going to need to know are these three important safety tips. So a motorcycle, including these scooters, requires a motorcycle endorsement in the state of Ohio, regardless of engine size, as long as they don't have pedals to make them a moped or qualify them as a moped. And so at 15 and a half, you can get a temporary permit, which is good for practicing on your own bike or a bike that somebody so graciously allows you to borrow for, as, uh, for a year. Uh, and certainly within that time, preferably, you would be able to go to the BMV and take a, a, an exam, a physical test in front of a trooper. you are basically going to stand there with a clipboard with the maneuvers that you have to hold out and a, a, tie, a stopwatch for timing you to make sure that you get up to speed before you do an emergency stop which is one of the five skills that they're going to have you do, along with others that you can read about on the internet. Skill number one with riding any kind of motorbike and, and bicycle, pretty much any kind of, any, 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 basically any kind or type of operation on a street with other road users or obstacles, you always want to do observation. This is your number one focus. This is your number one uh, skill. It's just to see what's coming your way so that you can react to it before it becomes a problem for you. Skill number two is really just going to be the motor skills necessary to adjust for speed or obstacles or for um, safety on the road in turns. Um, so that's easy into the brakes, easy out of the brakes, easy into the throttle and back out of the throttle. But number one is just where your eyes are. 
So where you're looking is where you are going to go as a motorbiker. And so if you're looking at where you want to go down the road, you'll go there. But if you're looking at the tree or the wall next to you, you're going to go there instead. If you're going around a turn and you're looking right down in front of you, you're pretty much just going to go right down in front of you. But if you're looking through the turn, you will complete it. Meeting Seth and John has definitely made me think of becoming a scooter rider in the future once I have my license. You can always get around better on a scooter. NASA announced plans for a new mission to the moon on September 21st, calling it the Artemis mission. NASA's Artemis mission is exciting for two reasons, historically and scientifically. Historically, because as we know, this will be the first mission of a female astronaut to the moon. After decades of women exploring space, um, and most recently spending up to a year on the International Space Station. But in addition to the historic nature of the Artemis mission, we'll also learn a lot scientifically. What we learn about lunar exploration tells us a lot about how Earth was formed. It also is a stepping stone for us to do further exploration into our solar system, like a mission to Mars later on. So I'm excited to, to learn more and to see the Artemis mission. I can't wait to see uh, the history making happen uh, with the first woman on the moon as well as what we learn for future years of exploration. NASA plans to return humans to the surface of the moon by 2024. This will be the first time humans have visited the lunar surface since the Apollo 17 in 1972 and will include the first woman on the moon. The mission will be in three stages with the Artemis 1 orbiting the moon without a crew in 2021 a fully crewed lunar orbit in 2023, and finally in 2024, a NASA crew landing on the surface of the moon. NASA will also be sending remote control missions twice a year starting in 2021. These missions will be using commercial lunar payload services and feature technologies such as a water hunting drone and a laser reflector used for measuring distance. The new class of lunar explorers will be wearing modern spacesuits that are more flexible than their predecessors in the Apollo missions, and they will land using a landing craft designed by one of three U.S. companies and will first dock at NASA's planned Lunar Gateway, an outpost in lunar orbit where the crews can resupply, launch special vehicles, and conduct experiments. I'm Malcolm with your 10-day forecast. Things should change midweek with temperatures in the 70s through Friday and remaining pretty warm through the weekend. Cooler temperatures are expected to return after that with lows in the mid to high 30s, meaning it's time to start bringing in your outdoor plants if you haven't already. This has been your KMNH Weather Report. This week's What's Happening segment features the Fall into Fitness event that happened last week on the campus of Clovernook School for the Blind and Visually Impaired. The fact that we can bring people of all ages and all abilities together to have fun together, to work out together, to exercise, and to stretch and just engage in physical fitness like everybody else does. It was a day of exercise and fun for everyone, and this event wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for some very special people who volunteered their time and expertise. So this is part of Physical Therapist Day of Service. So one day a year, physical therapists donate a day to community service. And so this year we decided to have this event here at the Clovenock Center for the Blind and Visually Impaired. And we invited people with visual impairment, uh, clients, uh, physical therapists from UC Health, Children's Hospital, and so forth. So it's really all ages, all abilities. This event was not just for kids, but every member of the family was invited to join in the fun and exercise. I think most parents, if you have a child uh, with a disability, with, say, visual impairment, your first instinct would be to protect them. This is us stepping in and saying, that's great, 
but we could also have them in a safe environment, train professionals, engage in sports and recreation and fitness events, just like anybody else. My organization is called The Bridge. Uh, blindness and visual impairment, but all disabilities of any type, is do sports and recreation where people can live a life just like you. I even got to participate in a tabletop game called Showdown. It is a game specially designed for the blind and visually impaired. The ball has noise in it. There's a protective shield. The ball always stays on the table, and it's just like, it's just like um, air hockey. But the goal is to get it from the other person's goal. And it's a lot tougher to win than you might think. You are not going to believe all the other games and sports that these kids get to experience. We're skydiving at iFly. We're looking at uh, boxing classes. If you're looking at beat baseball, we have equipment for beat kickball. And uh, we plan on doing these things here at, at Cloverlock and elsewhere around the city with uh, the help of the Reds Foundation, the uh, Reds Community Fund, and, and other organizations who are dedicated to adapting sports and fitness. So I encourage you to support this crew that is really making things happen for everyone. And the kids come in super nervous and they leave really accomplished and confident and happy and they can't wait to do it again. And that's what I love to see and that's what keeps us all driven to serve our community. Thank you for watching tonight's KMNH, Kids Making the News Happen. And remember, all we ask is that you wear a mask.